Today, we're gonna to talk about everything you need to know when submitting an incident with success factors. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of creating an incident, the first thing I want to state is that creating an incident should be a last resort, not a first resort. Uh, so there is a video on this channel, and I will put the, uh, put in the comments the a link to it uh, that kind of goes through the steps that you can go through, some of the documentation that you can consult before you uh, get to this point. So hopefully, um, when you are at the point where you're going to submit a ticket, you've gone through the pro all of these steps and have exhausted all of the remedies before we get here. But uh, of course, there are going to be, uh, definitely be times when uh, either the the system itself is misbehaving behaving or uh, quite often there's a lack of documentation about a specific issue that you're having. So um, in those, in both of those cases, it makes sense to go ahead and create an incident. And let's do that now. Okay, so we're going to start at me.sap.com. This is the new front end for creating incidents. It's new at the time of this recording. Um, so in order to get to where we're looking at here, you go to me.sap.com, and then on the left side where it says services and support, you click on that, and that gets you to this screen. From here, you're going to click on report a case. Um, that is the new terminology that uh, SAP seems to be uh, transitioning to uh, in a way from the term incident. Um, but since the rest of the UI still refers to them as incidents, I will continue to do so as well. But uh, in order to start the process, uh, you're going to click on the button to report a case. Um, now let's move on and look at the uh, incident itself. Okay, so this is the incident screen itself. Uh, from here at the top, you're going to see the customer name is going to default in. Uh, you will select the uh, system that you're having an issue with, um, and then you'll select the product area, which is typically your module. Uh, then you're going to put in a descriptive uh, subject line. Uh, you will. I always check the I consent checkbox, and then start typing in the description. Uh, now, one thing you're going to notice is on the right side, you're going to see incidents start to pop up, and a lot of times these can be really valuable. In in uh, many times, I uh, solve my issue by looking at the uh, incidents that are on the right side here, which often are a lot uh, more uh, useful than the ones that I get from just a general knowledge base uh, search. So definitely check that before you go on any further. Uh, now I'm going to go and I'm going to look at the uh, uh, structure that I like to use when I am creating the incident uh, itself, but I'm going to use a, uh, a kind of a bigger diagram in order to do that. After putting in hundreds of these over the years, this is the format I have landed on. Uh, so first off, you want to make sure that you have a greeting and a closing uh, on your uh, description. So uh, you're trying to be civil here. Uh, bear in mind, there's going to be a support person on the other end that you want to get on your side. And so you want to be businesslike, um, professional, but also cordial. Uh, so I always start with a greeting and end with a regards. Um, Okay, so now we move on, and the first thing we want to do is describe what's wrong. Uh, so most of the time, this is going to be just a description of what the system behavior is that you are not able uh, or, or you think is incorrect. Um, but oftentimes, it may not just be that the that something is incorrect. It could also be that you don't know how to do something. And I want to emphasize the point that if you consulted all the documentation and you can't find figure out how to do something, it is entirely reasonable for you to submit a ticket and to ask for documentation about how to do something, as long as it's something that's reasonable and you expect most customers would need to deal with anyway. So uh, feel free to make sure that you do that, but just make sure that you're very descriptive on what your issue is um, that you're trying to solve for. So that's the first section. Um, this, this next section is steps taken so far. So this section is where you say, these are the things that I have consulted. So in this case, I've said I have consulted at uh, help.sap.com. I also have done a KBA search. And if you have any uh, KBAs that you uh, consulted that didn't solve your problem, uh, make sure that you list out those numbers in here because it helps uh, the processor to know that you've done uh, your due diligence here. So that's uh, this next section. Um, 
And then the the step below, uh, the steps to recreate, this is something that's really great from success factor standpoint because it's really easy to give support people access to your system so that they can see the issue for themselves. Um, and so you can see here on the steps to recreate, uh, I've got one, two, three. Um, so this first step is number one, you put in the data center. So that is going to be what where they need to go to log in. Uh, the second part is the system ID um, that the person would uh, need to uh, log into. I, I realize that um, you have also uh, put this in the incident because you selected what system um, the uh, the incident should be on in the first place, but I can't tell you the number of tickets I've gotten back that said, well, what system is it? Even though it's already in the incident, make sure that you include it in the steps to recreate. Um, and then lastly on this point is the user. Um, and so you're going to need to put in the support user that uh, success factors will use to log in. Um, I am I'm going to uh, post a KBA here so that you can know the step-by-step, -step, the, the, the steps that you need to go through in order to give the support user access. It's really not that hard um, and you can follow through this process um, if you follow that KBA. Uh, next up, uh, you're going to put in um, step by step what the uh, processor needs to do in order to recreate the issue. So the more descriptive you are, you know, I try to uh, uh, knock this out and or put this into several uh, um, uh, steps so that there is really uh, it's clear exactly what the uh, uh, processor needs to do. So uh, if you put all of that into the description, you're a lot less likely to get um, the support team to return uh, your KBA to. I mean, excuse me, your incident to you, um, and you will be able to move on uh, with the rest of this process. So now let's talk about what happens after uh, we submit the incident. What, what do we look for when we're trying to close out? Okay, so we've submitted the ticket. Uh, let's talk about the rest of the process. So um, some tips that I have for the rest of the process. Number one, you're gonna get notified um, when it's your turn to do something on the incident. Make sure that you respond in a timely manner. Uh, it's gotta be really frustrating for success factors when we put in something, we say it's really high or it's high, and yet it takes us uh, a long time to get back to them uh, once they provide us their feedback. So make sure that you're responding in a timely manner uh, and keep up your end of the bargain. Uh, secondly, and this one I want to really emphasize because this is a, a, a really important point that I think that we all need to do. And that is uh, if the uh, solution uh, that you are provided you feel like is not uh, uh, fully documented uh, through a KBA or on help.sap.com, uh, don't close the ticket until uh, that KBA is released or the help.sap.com documentation is updated. Uh, because uh, if we all uh, just uh, go about our business and just get our answers, then the next person in line is also going to run into the same issue. So we want to make sure that we don't close that ticket till we're sure that the documentation uh, is updated based on the solution that we've been provided. Um, next up, um, and this one kind of goes with the uh, responding in a timely manner, uh, when the issue is resolved, close the ticket. Don't wait for it to uh, uh, get confirmed automatically. Uh, uh, when you get the solution provided, when that, when that solution happens, make sure that you're closing out your ticket. Um, uh, again, uh, whenever we want uh, SAP to respond to us in a timely manner it, it only uh, it, it's up to us to make sure that we're uh, holding up our end of the bargain and then lastly make sure that you complete your surveys at the end of your incident so if you get great service and they knock it out of the park make sure that you say that and then uh, if there are things that could have gone better in the process make sure that you are putting that in there because that is how su uh, success factors support knows uh, what they need to do so hopefully these tips and tricks will help you uh, create better incidents and uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions.